to the way politics works, to the way media works. And I saw the influence that media had over the community. And I thought, you know, maybe it would be interesting to find out how to run a media company. So I started my own media company. Um, it was called the Hamilton Examiner. It was out in Hamilton. And I ran that for four years. And I learned all aspects of the business, from writing to editing to layout to design to advertising. Um, to uh, working with large corporations and finding out you know, what strategies they needed to reach the community. What I did is I came to Toronto, I, I met my husband, moved to Toronto and decided to start the Women's Post. And that was designed originally and still is to reach businesswomen, to um, inform and inspire them, to create co a community for them. I'm running for mayor because I've had some great successes in my life and I want to give back to this city. I have the leadership skills, I've taken different businesses in different industries through crisis situations. So I know I can lead Toronto through the crisis that we're facing. We have to open the doors of government, we have to take a look at our services, our city services and figure out ways that the entrepreneurs, the businesses, the private sector can bid alongside the public sector. We need to get competitive. Right now, our costs have escalated and the level of service and the quality of service has decreased. And the people of Toronto don't want that. They want better services at lower costs. They want balance. We need to do that. We need to bring that into City Hall. And to do that, we have to open up the doors. We have to open up the bidding process. We have to look at the long-term future. We have to look at our children and say, do, are we building a city today for our children? Or are we just trying to fill in the gaps and, and bandage over the, the, the issues? Transit is a, is a huge issue. When I speak to the people of Toronto, I hear again and again, when are we going to build an extensive subway system? Toronto needs a subway system. All the other ideas like light rail, buses, streetcar system add to the gridlock on the streets of Toronto. They don't take away from it. They don't um, look at our climate. Half the year we have snow and we have ice. That will add to the cost of maintenance. So over the long term, light rail and streetcar systems cost more. But you have to look at the long term. I think the biggest challenge facing Toronto is our debt. We're um, close to $3 billion in debt. We also have infrastructure needs that add up to about $2.4 billion of maintenance and repair work. So we're in so much debt right now that we are not going to be able to fulfill our basic needs um, to the people of Toronto. And so there's a real crisis here that I think we need to focus on and deal with. I love this city. I love the people. We have the innovation. We have the technology. We have the creativity. We have to open up the doors of City Hall and use it. We have to um, welcome the people of, of this city instead of pushing them away and locking the doors. And that's been done for the past decade now. We have to open the doors and say, we want your input. We want you to um, opt back into this city and we're willing to listen. Uh, a lot of us opted out. There's a lot of social entrepreneurs out there who created business to deal with social challenges and, and problems um, they saw in the community. And they saw this and they said, you know, I could fix these, this problem with a business. If I create a business, I could fill a need. And uh, social entrepreneurs are, are wonderful and we've got so many of them here in Toronto. That's one of the things I love about Toronto but they're leaving. We have to stop them from leaving. We have to encourage them to stay here. Um, and look at why are they leaving? Why are all these people moving out of the city? Why are creative people, our innovators and our entrepreneurs leaving? 
My proposal is that we work together. We say to the people of Toronto, we will listen, and we actually do listen. Politicians have said that for years, oh yes, we'll listen. And then what happens, they get into office and the doors get shut and locked. What I propose to do is hand the keys of Toronto to every person in this city. Taking this key, you're telling me that you want to reinvest, you want to opt back into the city. And you're willing to give whatever it takes. But whatever it is, um, you're willing to do that to help Toronto. And by all means, go out and vote and make a difference in this election. Toronto is in a crisis and we have to change the way the city's being run. The only way we can do that is if the people of Toronto um, opt back in, if they say, yes, it's time for change and I'm going to do what I can to make a difference. So it's about civic spirit. We have to recapture that flame, that sense of civic spirit that built Toronto. If you look around at all these gorgeous buildings we have, there was a time when people got together, artists, writers, doctors, builders, businessmen, got together to create a great Toronto. So you know what, we're giving back to the city of Toronto. This is our home and we're building it for our children. And I think we need to do that. I think we need to do that now and I, we need to do it today. We can't put it off and we can't look the other way. We have to reinvest in Toronto. We have to opt back in.